Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. My name's Dr. Ghost, and today we're playing some more World of Warships Legends. And yeah, I hope everybody's having a fantastic start to their weeks. And uh, yeah, we got some World of Warships Legends content for you uh, to start the week off, of course. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and head on over to the wheel and spin. Now there are been there actually have been some comments about this wheel thing and people are like, "Oh, it's a it's, you're stealing ideas from Spartan Elite 43." And no, I'm not. I'm not stealing ideas. I gave him credit for the ideas. If you guys actually go back and watch uh, uh my older videos, literally from a couple weeks ago now, uh you guys will quickly realize that I have given plenty of credit to Spartan Elite 43 for this lovely wheel idea, and I encourage everybody else to also come over to wheelofnames.com and make your own wheel, okay? It's really simple. Go do it. It's fun. I, I, I uh, yeah, I use it quite a bit. So, anyway, uh, if you guys want to go go and make your own wheel, go to wheelofnames.com and go right ahead. Um, and yeah, if you guys do make content, and you guys do, uh, and you guys do use this wheel here, uh, this whole wheel concept. Uh, make sure to give Spartan Elite 43 a little bit of credit because he does deserve it. Um, I would not have actually thought of this without his, uh, without his video. So it does add a bit more fun to the videos, and that's exactly why we're using it. Okay, so nonetheless. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and spin the wheel and see what we are going to be playing in today's video. And we are going to be playing the... Oh, oh, the Wichita. Okay. Hey, I'll play the Wichita any day of the week. It's American. It almost, it almost picked the Furutaka. That would have been really unfortunate. That would have been really unfortunate. But no, we're lucky. So we're going to be playing the Wichita today. So... Let's go ahead and head on over to the Wichita and see what I know about this ship. So, we're going to go over it, do a little bit of a review, take a look at the commander, and you guys know the drill. So, head on over to the Wichita. Where is she at? Here she is. Okay. So, for my upgrades and loadout, I am running main battery mod 2 for the extra turret traverse. I'm actually going to take that off. I don't know why I have that on. I think I was doing that for like ranked or something i don't know but no 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 we need to put we need to put on aiming systems okay so we're using aiming systems mod one we are using propulsion mod two we are using concealment systems mod one and we are using main battery mod three now for my specs we've got thirty-seven thousand nine hundred hit points we've got six through 203 millimeters of armor and we've got a four percent torpedo damage reduction don't take torpedoes ladies and gentlemen for the artillery we've got nine uh three by three uh eight inch 203 millimeter guns that shoot out to 18.4 kilometers on my build with a eight second uh 8.6 second reload pretty good reload now the 180 degree turn time is 35 seconds so Without, you know, I did just take off my turret traverse mod, so that's definitely going to affect it. But I do valuable, I do value having extra, you know, dispersion and whatnot. But uh, your, your your base turret traverse is really bad, so just keep that in mind, okay? 35 seconds. Now for the HE shell maximum damage with a Citadel hit, it's 2600. And the fire setting chances on those 8 inch high explosive shells is 17%. Now the armor piercing shells, now this is where this ship starts to come into handy here, is the AP uh, 4600 maximum damage there with the Citadel. So this is American armor piercing. Now the Wichita's armor piercing on its 203mm guns aren't like anywhere near the Baltimore, you know, in terms of AP potential. But it's still there, and these 203s can still smack around things, okay? I hope that we are going to be able to utilize some of the AP in the gameplay portion. Now for the AA defense, uh, the AA defense is pretty decent. It's an American cruiser at the end of the day. Most American cruisers, I'm not saying all of them, but most of them, especially the high tier ones, do have pretty good AA. So you want to be watching out, okay? You've got a lot of Orlikans and Bofors and 127mm guns, aka your secondaries, that also produce flat clouds that do act as anti-aircraft defense, okay? So just keep that in mind. Now for the maneuverability, this is where the Wichita comes into play here, uh, more the, more so than the Baltimore. You know, the Baltimore has fantastic guns, we know this. However, the Baltimore is a little bit sluggish in terms of maneuverability. However, with the Wichita, 
you lose out on a little bit of the AP smackaroonies, but what you get in return is better maneuverability and better speed. 34 and a half knot speed on my build, 600, uh, 680 meter turning circle radius, and a six second rudder. Okay, if we go and take a look at the Baltimore, for example, all right? Take a look at the Baltimore. Go over to the maneuverability. You guys can see. Oof, look at that. Look at that. Look at that difference. You've got nearly uh, 100 meters, you know, minus to your turning circle radius. That is pretty significant. So you do have better maneuverability with the Wichita. Okay, so that is something to keep in mind. It also does play effect that because the Wichita is a much smaller ship. You take a look at this, right? It looks pretty big, right? And then you take a look at the Baltimore. Take a look at the Baltimore, and it zooms out, and it is a little bigger. The Baltimore is a little bigger, it's a little wider, it's a little longer, so it, all around it's a lot more girthier, and the Baltimore has a lot more heavy artillery on board, so it's a little slower, okay? A little bit more sluggish, so just keep that in mind with the with the, uh, with the the Baltimore. It's a little, little bit of historical accuracy right there. But anyway, back over to the, uh, to the uh, specs here. Uh, maneuverability is pretty good on the Wichita. Now for the concealment, I've got 10.8 by sea, I've got 6.8 by air, two guaranteed with a 7.1 while firing in smoke. Take a look at the armor, you've got 27 millimeters plastered everywhere, and with this 27 millimeters, if you are bow in, like this, or if you are stern in, like this, okay, you gotta watch out for that flat end there, because that can get penned, but for the most part, if you are bow in anybody, or you're well angled like this, uh, anything with 381 millimeter guns or smaller will not be able to penetrate your bow or any of this armor for that matter if it's angled. So ships like Bismarck's, Vanguard's, uh, ships like anything with 15 inch guns or smaller will not be able to penetrate the bow or stern or anywhere if it's angled. Okay. However, if they do decide to load HE, that's a different story. HE will pen no matter what. So, I mean, not not always. It depends on the size of the HE shell. But a 15-inch HE shell will go right right through that like butter um, and get some dis decent penetration damage. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, let's take a look at the commander. We're running Norman Scott. We got him 16 Legendary 4. Uh, we got him fully decked out in terms of levels here. For our inspirations, we've got Francesco Mambelli and Nikolai Kuznetsov. Our base trait is directed impact. We've got beyond range. We've got igniter. We got punch through. We got fixated, and we got refill. Or sorry, we got fully packed. And like I said, he's a legendary four rank sixteen captain. He is fully decked out. And uh, take a look at our uh, our our stuff here. Our camo. We are running the red, white, and blue camo. If you guys are interested, it does look better than the wish.com camo. <laughs> I don't like the Wichita look. I like the Wichita look. The look. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, we're running the uh, red, white, and blue camouflage, and we are running a bunch of uh, economy, uh, econom economical boosters. <laughs> I need to learn to speak. But yeah, we're running a bunch of economic boosters, along with an epic battle booster as well, to increase our main battery range, our maximum movement speed, and our overall cooldown time for all of our consumables. So, Nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, enough jibber-jabbering. We have to get it out of the way because there are a lot of people that do go into the comments and are always asking questions about what my builds are, and there you go. This is for people who are wondering what my builds are, okay? But nonetheless, we are going to go ahead and head on into a battle, okay? So most of you guys should know the deal by now, okay? Uh, with these videos, I do a one take. This means that whatever the match ends up being, this is all live, keep that in mind, so whatever the match is, is going to get posted regardless. So if I win, if I lose, if I die, if I live, no matter what happens in the game, it's going to get posted on the channel, okay? So that is something that uh, I hope some of you guys can learn to accept and maybe even enjoy a little bit, because... What this actually does is it shows off that, you know, I am, at the end of the day, a regular player like everyone else in this game. And not every single game, you know, is going to be a barn burner. That's something people need to, I think, learn to accept to some degree, okay? Not every single game is going to be an absolute, you know, barn burner. You know, a lot of the content creators out there are posting just their best games. They nitpick and they cherry pick their games, and even I do that occasionally. Okay, I'm I'm not I'm not entirely innocent here. I I I do post some very good games here and there, but I do like to post these kind of videos where it's just my everyday sort of experience with these ships. Okay, General now quarters. anyway, with that out of the way, we are on shards. It's a domination mode. It's the rainy version. I do like it. The art department, man, really does carry this game, let me tell you. But 
yeah, we are on shards. We're on the right side. We're going to be heading on over to Charlie here and see what we can go ahead and do. Now, notice there are barely any battleships. There's a bunch of cruisers to mess with. This is a this is an American heavy cruiser's wet dream right here. Ganiza now we know only has 15 inch guns. Okay, Ganiza now only has 15 inch guns, which means we can ricochet pretty much all of the armor piercing that he sends at us. Okay, unless he hits like superstructure or if he obviously hits us with high explosive, but. We know that we can actually maybe get away with some things here and maybe be a little bit more aggressive. So I'm actually going to push up with our destroyer here and see if we can't go ahead and help him. Now we got a Kagero over here. We got an Ochikab over here. I'm going to load the AP or I'm going to load first shoot this HE salvo. Then I'm going to load the AP and see if we can't do some things to this enemy Ochikov. He is right now messing up our Akatsuki. Our Akatsuki needs to get the heck back. And preferably not die. That would be awesome. You know what I mean? But, hey, whatever. But we're going to see if we can't absolutely obliterate this Ochakov here with the armor piercing. And, you know, yeah, that's what we're going to try to do here. Now, unfortunately right now, my AP is just not doing a whole lot. And unfortunately right now, my destroyer is taking torpedoes. That is not good. Now, we did just get a couple citadels on that Ochakov, which is fantastic. We will take that any day of the week. And we just got also a turret knockout on him. So right now, that dude is not having any fun. He is not having any fun. Now we got the uh, we got the Kagero spotted on radar. Remember, we got three radars because of our fully packed. So we are going to utilize those radars, okay? We're not just gonna let them go to waste here. So keep that in mind. Now I'm actually gonna adjust the audio. It is a little loud, I do apologize, but I'm gonna turn that down just a little bit. And we are going to continue to open up on this enemy, Ochikov, here, and just do as much damage as possible. We actually did get a Citadel at that angle, funny enough. I mean, that just goes to show right there. The power of American 203mm armor-piercing shells. They are fantastic. I cannot emphasize that enough. Even on the Wichita, okay? These aren't even the super punchy Baltimore freaking high-velocity heavy armor-piercing shells. These are just regular American 203s. Imagine what the Baltimore is capable of, man. Maybe one day the wheel will actually pick that for us. <laughs> or if I get a good game recorded in it, and I might even post that as well. But nonetheless, uh, you know, we'll see what we can do here. Now, unfortunately, our, uh, our Akatsuki got absolutely obliterated, so he is running away, which I don't blame him. And our Algeri is kind of being a little passive, so, I mean, hey, whatever. It is what it is. Now, it looks like the enemy carrier just launched some torpedoes. We are going to be able to dodge these torpedoes just like so, uh, mainly because, well, we are a very agile heavy cruiser, so there you go. Now there is the enemy destroyer, he just got spotted. I'm being a little aggressive here, so I'm going to slow down and not preferably get absolutely obliterated, but as you guys can see, our AA is absolutely going to town right now on this enemy carrier's planes, which is very good. Very good indeed. Now we're gonna take some blind shots at this destroyer here. He's actually backing up, so we're gonna we're gonna anticipate that a little bit. And unfortunately, our dispersion is absolutely abysmal, abysmal. But we did get a hit there, blind. We will take it. We are gonna keep on firing into that smoke screen. Now that was a little low, unfortunately. That actually, that was actually very low, but it doesn't matter either way, because he is right now backing up still. Now we are gonna have a radar in 11 seconds. Keep in mind, we got we got fully packed on, so we are going to be able to get that even... We're going to be able to get our stuff back quicker, which is very nice. We're going to be fire. able to pop that radar right about now. Problem solved, sir. There's the enemy Kagero. We also have an enemy Ochakov to deal with, so we are going to switch over to the AP and deal with that guy. The enemy Ochakov. We are getting bombed by the carrier, which is just not fun. But what can you freaking do, man? What can you freaking do? Unfortunately, we I think we're actually going to go down here. Um, but, hey, we did our best on this side of the map. Um, the Ochakov is still presenting an angle, so I'm not going to be able to get a penetration, unfortunately, into a Citadel. So we are going to switch over to the, uh, to the high explosive here. We got a heal, so we might be able to live just for a bit longer. Um, I was really hoping that this Algeri, you know, could be useful in this game, but unfortunately, it just was not meant to be. Now, we did switch over to the HE. Unfortunately, we just got double fired because RNG is just not liking us right now. And we did just set him on fire. Now we just put out that double fire because we're not going to deal with that crap. And we are still alive, but barely. 
barely still hanging on. Our RNG is actually starting to catch up a little bit. We have a double fire on that Ochakov. Ochakov is still using AP. I don't know why. I mean, we're bow in. It's not like he's going to do a whole lot to us. And we are going to be able to actually just burn him out. I mean, that's fantastic. We will take it. We're actually going to be able to live here, which is awesome. That's fantastic. We will take it. I'm actually surprised I'm still even alive right now. But there you go. 50,000 damage. We got a kill. We got a clear sky. We are doing pretty damn good up to this point. I don't know about I don't know about you guys, but we are doing pretty damn good so far. Now, we got the enemy Ganizen now over here. We're going to angle in a little bit and hopefully not get absolutely obliterated. Um, because, well, we can ricochet his shells, so we will hopefully be able to do that. And just like that, he actually misses because, well, it's a Ganizen now. I mean, Ganizen now's are not very accurate, let's be real. But we did just get a fire on that Ganizen now, and he is going to still burn, baby burn. And he is also getting torpedoed by our Akatsuki that is still alive, miraculously. We are still taking torpedoes from the enemy destroyer off our bow, which is hilarious. But yeah, we are doing pretty damn good at this point. We are a little lucky that we're still alive, but hey, we'll take what we can get, man. We will take what we can get. Our team has done pretty good up to this point on the other side of the map. As you guys can see, they took Bravo, they took Alpha. And uh, I'm pretty proud of them, man. I'm actually surprised that the team is actually doing things this game. It's amazing when that happens. It really is. Um, but we are, we might actually go down here because we are getting shot at by absolutely God and everybody and their mothers right now. We're going to switch over to the AP because I would like to hopefully, hopefully get some, uh, get a salvo off before he goes around the island there on this York. Uh, we, the York is pretty broadside. We got a pretty good shell grouping there and that could absolutely obliterate him. And it did. We get a Citadel for 8,000. We will take it. And we are still angled to the Ganizen now. We just ricocheted some of his shells, as I predicted, and now as I was hoping. We're going to switch over to the high explosive, because um, we can't really do much with our AP, unfortunately, while he's bow in. Um, we're going to aim right at his bow there, maybe get some penetrations, just like that, and a fire as well. That's fantastic. Uh, I'm probably going to die here, because I'm only on 3,000 HP, and all I need to do is hit me like that into my superstructure. And, uh, yeah, down I go. But, hey, I mean, not a bad run whatsoever, I mean, in the Wichita. We have a fire on that Ganiza now. I'm not sure if that's actually going to kill him or not. I mean, as you guys can see in the top right, we are still ticking up damage. So we might actually take that guy out. We'd, we'll have to wait and see. But, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that is the Wichita. I mean, we did pretty good on this side of the map, all things considered. We only had a freaking, you know, an Algerie and a uh, and an Akatsuki as support. We f we uh, managed to fend off against um, a Kagero, a Ochakov, the carrier and everything. And we managed to survive a lot longer than I expected I would. So I'm proud of what me of what we and the team managed to accomplish overall. I mean, as you guys can see, the team has taken Bravo, they've taken Alpha, the carrier's moving up. They're all doing their part, and that's fantastic. Uh, we're going to end up winning this game. But unfortunately, we did not take out that Ganizen now. I think he got a heal off, and he probably had Will to Rebuild from the Destroyer. So, there you go. But what we're going to go ahead and do here is wait for the match to end. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just fast forwards to the end of the match here because, well, there's not much else left to do. We're going to win this game. Enemy Carrier is almost dead. So, I'm just going to go ahead and fast forwards to the end of the game, and I will see you guys there. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's going to do it for this game right here. We just hit the end of the match. As I said, I was going to fast forwards for you guys just to save time on the video. This video has already gone on for about 20 minutes uh, on, my, uh, on my screen here. But hey, not a bad game whatsoever in the Wichita. As you guys can see here, we are ranking up a bunch as well from the Battle Pass that we did purchase. We got some insignias, got a bunch of stuff. I mean, look at all the freaking levels we're gaining. Holy crap. Never-ending levels? Hello. <laughs> there we go. But anyway, 83,000 damage in the Wichita. Not a bad, like, first, you know, sort of, you know, not a first impressions, but a um, one-take sort of match, if you will. Um, we did get a capture zone. We got six secondary target hits. We got one defense ribbon, four citadels, six fires, one destroyed ribbon, four incapacitations, 21 planes shot down. In the Wichita, 
we were talking about the AA in the uh, in the review portion. So AA was actually coming in strong in this game. Two detect and uh, of course 94 shell hits. We got a clear sky. We were top of the team with 3.2k base XP. I mean, hey, not a bad freaking game whatsoever in the Wichita, man. I will freaking take that. And look at the amount of credits we earned, too. 822,000 credits. Nearly a million credits earned in this battle. That is mainly because, obviously, number one, it's a tier 7 premium. And number two, we got all of those economy boosters on. So that really does help out our credit gain for sure. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to go ahead and do it for this one. I hope you all did enjoy today's video. If you guys did enjoy it in any capacity, make sure to go down there and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Speaking of sub uh, subscribing, thank you guys for 2,600 subscribers. That's right. We hit a new milestone on the channel. We are getting ever so slightly closer to 3,000 subscribers. I cannot thank you guys enough for the support on this channel thus far. I hope you all, though, have a fantastic rest of your weeks and uh, look forward to another video tomorrow but nonetheless everybody i'm gonna go ahead and open this crate real quick i might as well but nonetheless everybody i hope you all have a great one and i will catch you all on the next one peace out stay healthy as always